2015 to 2019 R1. I've had three R1s now, three new generation R1s. So I guess I could give a pretty decent comparison. Um, also, I've had, well, I've had quite a few bikes, two 1290, Super Duke 1290s, Ducatis, four MT09s. I've had a ton of bikes, but most recently I, uh, I had the R1s. So I figured I'd get a little, give a little comparison considering I probably get asked this uh, three to four times a week on my Instagram account to compare, you know, this bike to the R1 and which one would I go for, which that's a tough question for me because I, I mean, I just go through bikes. I, I, I don't necessarily get rid of them because I don't like them. I get rid of them a lot of times because I get bored with them. I, I you know, dress them up. I do all sorts of stuff to them and then I just get rid of them super weird I guess but what is this guy's like blowing serious black smoke ridiculous like uh, but anyways you know uh, I'll just first start off with uh, comfort I mean that's probably the biggest thing you know everybody asks about is uh, you, you know comfort obviously is an extremely aggressive bike it's made for racing so that that's that's a no-brainer this this wins out every time as a matter of fact this is probably one of my most comfortable bikes i've owned uh you know everybody keeps telling me to get the comfort seat for this bike but i gotta tell you i i love this seat i can go for hours on this so far and my butt doesn't hurt so uh mt09s I think those are the worst seats ever made. I mean, I've had dirt bikes that I feel like were more comfortable than those, but again, just my opinion. But anyways, uh, you know, this is this is basically an R1. I mean, this doesn't have the top speed, it doesn't have the RPM, the titanium valves, you know, things like that in the engine. But for the most part, it's, it's, it's the R1. Um, it's got the R1 sound. I actually basically had this, um, I had the little longer pipe on the, um, I can't remember what it's called, on the R1. My, my latest, last R, R1 was the uh, 2018 all black one. And uh, it screams just like this one. So, Comfort-wise, even with the Healy bars, I actually have a, a code if you guys are interested on one of my, some of my old videos on he, for Healy bars, which actually raise the bars up a little bit. So it is it is quite a bit more comfortable compared to stock. However, it, it's nothing compared to this. You just you just can't even you can't even compare, com, you know, comfort-wise, what this is compared to that. So that just this just blows it away. Same with you know low end torque. I mean. Don't get me wrong, that R1 is an absolute monster. I mean, it is a beast and, you know, it just does not have the, um, let me get around this corner here. It just does not have that low end power like this does. I mean, this cruise control is amazing. 
absolutely amazing. So that's a that's a huge win for this one. Uh, you know, then we'll get down to looks. <laughs> These this this bike is subjective in my opinion. Um, you gotta love naked bikes, and you gotta love that transformy robotic look, which is I'll be honest with you, is 100% growing on me. I love this bike. I love everything about it. I love the looks. I love the motor. I love the comfort. It, it's hands down. 100% my most favorite bike I've ever owned and I've owned a lot of them now the R1 there's uh, <laughs> the, the looks wise they're just beautiful I, I in my opinion they're just a beautiful looking bike uh, there's just there's no question about it uh, I, I mean I guess it's subjective still I suppose but it's just a great looking full fairing bike and you know there's not a in my opinion not a ton i mean the ducatis look beautiful don't get me wrong but i just oh i'm speeding pretty good and then i got two highway patrol there yikes um i've had ducatis i just don't trust them i just the reliability in my opinion is just not there i mean anything can happen to any bike don't get me wrong but uh, Yamaha wise I've never had an issue my Ducatis I had my my Ducati hyper motard uh, it's a great looking bike um, you know about the same power torque everything that the mt 9s got but <clears throat> just looks amazing in my opinion but, uh, you know, I had a lot, not a lot of problems with it, but I had, I don't know how many recalls. It would stall out going 80 miles an hour down the highway. You know, it just, I mean, you could do a little research. You just know they've got issues. Not all of them, not all of them. I'm not trying to generalize, but numbers wise, let's just be honest. Uh, the Japanese bikes are hard to beat reliability wise. So, that's it. In the end, really, I, I leave it up to you. What do you like? What, I mean, I mean, you gotta love the look of a bike. That's me. I'm totally aesthetic type of person. I love the looks of bikes, and Darwin's amazing. And I'll be honest with you, I would not trade this bike for. A 2020 R1, a 2019 R, whatever. I love this bike. Um, me personally, someone that doesn't, uh, if if you're a person that doesn't come from sport bikes, <clears throat> you know, go go with this. If you know sport bikes, you're used to that position, which I am. I mean, I, I, you get used to it pretty quickly. But there's nothing like getting on this bike and basically having the same exact power uh, but in a much more comfortable position yeah you just can't beat it and just that I mean that that's fourth gear going 50 miles an hour to a stop and it, it, it just hops up in the air this thing is in, insane it's absolutely insane like I said hands down my most favorite bike you know, the, the R1's an absolute monster. It's a beast, for sure. But so is this. This just does not have that top end. I'm sure you could probably get it, change the gearing. You could get more top end. But again, how often are you even using that? Never. Well, rarely ever. I just think this is so much more of a practical bike. You know, compared to the MT-09s, this does phenomenal on the highway, plus cruise control. I mean, that's, that's quarter throttle. This thing is just, um, it's just ridiculous. I, I love it. So, you know, clutch-wise on the uh, R1, I mean, you got to let that clutch almost all the way out to the end, then it takes off. So, you know, imagine doing that in traffic. It, it's, it's just a lot of, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's, 
again the position it's just all up to what you know what you're used to now having said that I think everybody should try a sport bike once in their lifetime I mean they're fun and they're fast to get on that highway and it just it hovers through almost every single gear it's crazy so uh, they're fun but I feel like they're short-lived a lot of guys live on them they, they love them uh, I just get bored with them I, I mean and, and I'll eventually get bored with this but as of right now again my favorite bike I'll eventually get bored with it something else will come out that I'll be into now I do hope that I can keep this for a while. I'd love to just hang on to this for a while and this be my, my bike for a while because as of right now in my mind there's nothing better than this one. So uh, I guess one last thing, insurance. I pay uh, $120 a year for this bike. Full coverage, a year. I paid $900, I think, a year for my R1s, which probably to a lot of you younger guys, I'm, I'm, just, I'm 39 years old and um, married, house, good, great credit, you know, all that crap, but, and that all, they take that into consideration now, so be careful when you're screwing up your credit, you young whippersnappers. Um, you know, some of these guys, I know a, a guy that, <laughs> a guy that bought one of my R1s, he just paid me cash for that bike, and I said, man, don't, don't leave my house without getting this thing insured, and he's like, I can't. And what do you mean you can't and he shows me his quotes on his phone and I don't know the guy's credit I don't know his driving history but his quotes were one of them that I saw with my own two eyes was eleven thousand dollars a year <laughs> so no one, no one can do that. No one can do that. So he, he, he risks it every time he goes out, and you know if he crashes that bike or something happens, that's it for him. That's which totally sucks. So you know that's something to think about. Generally, in my opinion, a person that's a little bit newer to riding can control this bike a little better too. This is not a, uh, again, I've done that video before too, is this is not a great, or not a good at all, in my opinion, first bike. But I think the other one's even worse. Oh, uh, that's a bummer, I missed that light. It's just the, the riding position that it puts you in, it's not only is it uncomfortable, but I feel like for someone that's not used to riding a bike like that, uh, it's harder con to control, they're harder to turn around. You see guys, you know, go on Instagram or YouTube and you could see all day long guys just dropping them over left and right in their driveway in the parking lot going two miles an hour. They're, they're harder co to control. So with this bike, if you can ride a, a motorcycle, a dirt bike, you can ride this. Can you handle the power? Eh, that's subjective, I guess, too. Um, it's, just, it's a lot of bike to handle, especially for a new rider. So, uh, I don't know, guys. I, uh, my pick is this one. But again, I'm just doing this video because I get asked all the time, you know, which which bike would you choose? Which bike should I get? You know, just uh, again, it's, uh, you know, that that's all up to you. I just, that's my pros and cons. Um, I, I, at this point, I'm not saying I'll never have another sport bike again, because I'm, sh I'm sure I will, but uh, this is, this bike for me is just, it's, it's amazing. I love everything about it. It's so much fun. It's so comfortable to ride. This gets about the same exact gas mileage as my um, as my R1s did. I had a two thousand two 2016s and a 2018. You can see videos of those on my Instagram or on my YouTube channel in the past. 
One I got because it was my first R1. It was a gray one. The thing looked amazing. It was awesome. Had exhaust on that too. But um, I got rid of that. I think I got a Super Duke. I think I got a Super Duke. I got rid of that. Got another different color Super Duke. And then I went and got another R1 because I was looking for a bike. And then they, it was, I think it was 2018 at the time. And they had a leftover 16 in 2018. So I stole that bike. So I actually, um, since I got it for such a fantastic price, what I did was uh, put a little extra money into it. Uh, and I wrapped it and I wrapped it to make it look a little bit like an R1M but with white, blue, and, and uh, carbon fiber. Man, it looked amazing. But I, and I ended up selling that. I actually sold that I think in two days for full price. That bike was one of my favorite looking bikes, hands down. Uh, it looked awesome. And then I think, I don't know, I went through another couple other bikes, probably MT-09s, and then I got the 2018 R1 again, which was all blacked out. So, that's my experience with the R1. Awesome, fun bikes. This one just, in my opinion, blows it away. Comfort-wise, top end no of course but power jeez you get on this and this feels like just a, a rocket you know until 100 miles an hour maybe even further and then the r1's just gonna it's gonna take over of course but again for the most part someone that's riding around even on the highway and you know city too i mean you just can't you just can't beat this bike so much fun so all right guys that's just that's my humble opinion i've had a, a lot of bikes i have people keep asking me so there it is just an opinion don't get all butt hurt because you got an r1 or you got some other bike or you know whatever it's just my opinion man who cares here's what i say go get what you like that's what i would do i just happen to really like this one